Well, good evening, everyone. How are you? What we have now is our other teaching. And we are going back to Proverbs, of course. The three chapters that I will be uh, dealing with are from Proverbs. <clears throat> so the first one we're going to deal with is chapter 4. Because we did chapter 3 on 3.30.21. So there's a teaching somewhere for um, chapter 3. So right now, I didn't write down what I called it. So right now what we're going to do is go to chapter 4 of Proverbs. Hear ye children the instructions of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. <clears throat> for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And this is Solomon talking, giving instruction to his children. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. So he's talking about how David and Bathsheba had him, right? He married Sheba, and Bathsheba is his mother. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom. <clears throat> get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither doctrine, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. When she, excuse me, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the ways of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy step, thy shall not be straightened. Excuse me. When thou goest, thy step shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. <clears throat> Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it. Turn from it, and pass away. For thy sleep not exceed, they have done mischief. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And the way of the wicked is as darkness and know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. <clears throat> let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of the feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor left. Remove thy foot from evil. So like I said, this is where we're removing the flesh, right? He is telling him in this entire passage here to remove the flesh and be within the spirit. You are in the chosen bloodline. Solomon is telling his son, you are part of the chosen bloodline. So there's no reason for you to not have the right spirit. So he's saying, he's giving him the wisdom and some knowledge and understanding and letting him know you are of the chosen you are to carry on the work that has been started that has been established which is just being a priest for God being an advocate for God because Abraham Isaac and Jacob are all priests so his main bloodline are priests right his chosen bloodline Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the priests, right? What is Jesus? The high priest, right? Jesus is the high priest. He is the end of that bloodline in the Bible, that is. So, he is a high priest, right? So, that is a bloodline of priests, right? Um, what was that? 
So he's saying, do not depart from my words. These are health to your bones. This is life to you. This is light to you, light for you. Whenever you're going through a dark time, this is your light to save your life. So don't ever depart from what I'm telling you. I would never tell you wrong. My father was David. David was my father. And he he went through some things. He was a righteous man, but he still went through some things. He went through what some people would say is unacceptable, but they have to reread his story. Correct. So with that being stated, my father was an honorable man. So he taught me the right ways. So I, Solomon, who have asked God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, am giving it to you as my son. So then you can pass it on to the rest of our generations, upon generations, upon generations. And then Jesus comes, and then everything will be recorded for us to continue to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. With the help of God, of course, which is opening yourself up to the Heavenly Father, so that he can trust you and give you his understanding. Right. <clears throat> you can read a book all you want to. But if they're using big words and you don't know them, you've never seen them. Now you got to get a dictionary. Right. And that will help you with an understanding of what those words are. Right. So you need God to give you an understanding. You can read this Bible all you want. But you need an understanding from God. Right. To, to get what he's saying not what you want to pick up correct because if that's the case a lot of people will omit all of this stuff and <laughs> live lasciviously right like they've been doing right so he's telling him do not take yourself out of the holy ordinance because you will get yourself in our bloodline the legacy of Abraham Isaac and Jacob in huge trouble you are to stay in your lane. Do not veer right or left. Do not look back. Go straight. That's all you're supposed to do. Go straight and keep your ears open, your eyes open, and your heart open for God and his instructions and his leading and guidance only because you are a chosen. So you can't afford to say, well, let me see what they're talking about. Nah, you're a chosen. You cannot allow anybody to put anything in your ear other than God and who he has sent to speak to you directly, right? And our hearts, our souls, our minds, our bodies always know when this person is sent from God and when it's just somebody who's jumping in the way, right? Whew, where we at? Where we at? Chapter 5. These are warnings against unchastness. Didn't I tell you when you're fornicating? Right. Your mind is clogged. Your body is stank. Your breath stank. Everything about you smells when you're fornicating. When you're living a nasty, selfish, I don't care, I'm going to sleep with whoever I want, however I want life. Understand, you have an odor. And people can smell you. Right. When you are fornicating and when you are dealing with the same sex, you have an odor. Right. My son, attend unto my wisdom, this is chapter 5, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou may regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop, uh, drop as, uh, what? <laughs> For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. So when she's speaking, she's sweet, she's smooth, she's, um... Uh, cunning, she's uh, sexy, she's sensual, she's able to hit that spot for you because she's done it plenty of times, right? She got to get the gap, right? To be sexy and sensual and trap her a man or a woman, whichever she so chooses to get, right? But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on earth. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life her ways are movable that thou cannot know them right so she is very secretive she don't let you know how she moved but in the end everything for her will be bitter right there will be a bitter ending for this person her life looks like it's fun it looks like it's exciting but at the end of the day she's a whore so 
everything she's showing you is a facade. She goes home, cries in the shower every night and wishes that she could die, right? Or she wishes that she could change and doesn't. Or she goes home and just does all of that stuff and then shakes it off and goes back to living her stank life. Like, oh, well, I just had my cry like I usually do, right? Right. <clears throat> right, putting on the show for herself, right? Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way from far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. So stay away from a woman like this, because she will have you acting a wild fool with her. This is the type of woman, yet again, who is like um, the horror. She will change you into her and hate you at the same time, right? And play you at the same time and cause you to get hurt and to lose at the same time. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and their years unto the cruel. And she will also get the same karma. And she's gotten that karma before. She understands getting karma. And that's why she does the same thing to other women. She takes other women and other men down because of what? She understands karma. And she wants other people to get the same karma that she has. She wants other people to go through the same tumultuous things that she's been through. But what does she do? She caused that tumultuousness within her life by what? Her own personal, private what? Choices. Exactly. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed and say, How have I hated instruction in my heart, despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instruct me? I was almost in all evil in the midst of. The congregation is assembly. Drink waters out thy own cistern, and running waters out thy own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters of in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not the strangers with thee. So, what he's saying is, if you get caught up with this woman, you're going to be trying to figure out, how did I get there? I know better. How did I end up there? Because this woman is a total trickster, and she's done it before. She's used to doing this. She lives like this. And this is more than likely an older woman who's been doing it ever since she was a youngin'. And it's probably generational. Of course it's generational. Right. So, you will find yourself screaming and hollering, talking about, how did I get here? I usually obey instruction. Why have I not obeyed instruction this time? Right. Because of what? You wanted to be on chast. You was running with a chick who was busting it open, right, popping it wide, right, right, and then she got you caught up in the way she lives, right, drinking waters, right, out of other people's wells, when it says, no, you need to drink out your own, you need to look at yourself, you need to drink out your own well, you need to get things from yourself, and not be spending time with this woman, you are missing out on life, spending time with this uh, lascivious woman, he said, and being a lascivious woman yourself, you are missing out on things, right? So, let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So, he is saying, have your own. He is telling his son, have your own. Do not be running around here with no any and every woman. You have your own wife. Stay with the wife of your youth. Meaning, don't be doing stuff to where you'll end up divorced from your wife. Do not have to force your wife to be put away meaning do not have to force yourself to get divorced because you were out here living a nasty life and now your wife wants nothing to do with you any longer right she has to divorce you and be put away because you chose to be nasty and she still loves you that's not fair to your wife so what he's saying is mind your own business and don't be out here fornicating excuse me don't be out here committing adultery right but he says, they, I have a woman chosen for you from youth. So don't be out here messing with these chicks neither. Because I already have a woman for you. So I want you to stay a virgin. And when you get with your wife, right? So y'all both will be virgins, right? He says, so mind your own business. Drink out your own well. Drink out your own sister and leave other people's alone. Me, uh, stay out of another man's legs, right? That woman's legs is that man's. Stay from out of them. They don't belong to you. So don't take yourself over there. Right. Chapter 5, 19. Let her be as loving hind, as loving hind and pleasant row. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And he's talking about your own wife. Right. Find pleasure in your own wife. Right. Help your wife get back to looking youthful if that's a problem. Help your wife lose some weight if that's a problem. Right. Get her back looking sexy so you're not looking at nobody else. Right. 
remember how sexy she is if she haven't gained any weight or anything and you guys just been together a long time rekindle remember what made you want that thing right he said let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love and why wilt thou my son be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger he said why would you want another chick when you got such a bad chick at the crib anyway trust me your chick is bad so what what she do everything you want what is it that another woman gonna do for you other than look different in the face different in the body right <laughs> she ain't gonna be no different she's gonna be worse trust me she's not your wife anything other than your wife is worse right for the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall behold it with the cords of his sins. And God was just, I mean, and Solomon was saying, if it's the wife that God chose for you, there's no one better. Right. You might choose a banshee, a yeti. That's your own fault. So there is something out there better for you if you are a good person. Right. I've seen some dudes like, dang. How he ends up with that chick? Like, right. She must have catfished him, right? Because she is pure evil and he is so sweet, right? So he shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. So his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holding with the course of his sins. So if you are over there looking at another woman and you are married, understand that God will take you down. He will hurt you. He will take everything from you. Your wife will give you, will get everything that you own and God will beat you down to the ground for that adultery because he doesn't play about adultery when you have a beautiful sweet loving godly wife at the crib and you out there tripping on her God takes you down in the worst way he takes you through some 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 marathon beatdowns right he slow tear you down right and yes he does where are we at chapter six warnings against idleness right <sighs> my son if thou surety for thy friend if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger and thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself, when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself, and make sure thy friend give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. So, always be diligent to apologize. If you done did something and cut somebody out, apologize right then and there, because you know doggone well it wasn't that person's fault. If you feel bad about something, immediately... Apologize right then and there. Don't go ponder on it and think about it. And apologize to that person right then and there. Even if, you know, it was like, you know what? They was in the wrong, but I shouldn't have cussed them out. Yo, I'm sorry for cussing you out, but you know, right? You, right. I apologize for cussing you out. But I'm not apologizing for being upset with you. Because I needed to be upset with you because of blah, blah, blah. Right. But I should not have cussed you out. That was disrespectful. I could have handled it better. Right. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Yeah, don't give yourself over to being hunted. Don't give yourself over to being vengeful. Right. Do not give yourself over to being somebody's target for vengeance. Right. But sometimes, but you really can't help that. You can't help how people feel about you. Like myself, I have not done anything for people to feel this uh, hatred towards me. Trust me, people have seen the feeling hatred towards me before I even open my mouth. Right. Thank you. Deliver thyself from row from the hand of the hunter and the bird from the hand of the follower. People will tell you to hate somebody, and if you are a follower, you will do so. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. You will end yourself up to hate a person, right? Just because somebody tell you to and you're a follower, right? <laughs> Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, right? Right. Provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the in, in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O slugger? How long will thou arise out? When will thou rise out of thy sleep? So other people are working, cleaning themselves up, doing what they're supposed to do in life. You're sitting around being a troublemaking slugger, not wanting to have anything good in life. He said, "Well, I mean, what you think you're gonna get other than poverty? So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth in thy want as an armed man." Right? You want you're in poverty because you're not working you sweating somebody <laughs> trying to steal like an armed man from someone because of your wants but you're in poverty because of your laziness you don't want to get up and do anything you want to harass someone you want to take what someone has you want to complain about what the next man is doing right idleness is a problem so he says don't be like those people who are like that dear son because you are the reason why you don't have anything 
and nobody's going to get up and take you to the bathroom. You have to get up and go take yourself to the bathroom as long as your legs are working. Nobody's going to pick you up and take you to the bathroom and sit you on the toilet and stuff as long as you are well able and body to do so. Right. It's absurd for a person to have to do that when you yourself can do that. So it's absurd for people to take care of well able bodied people just because they're lazy as I don't know what. Right. And it's absurd to think that somebody should take care of you and give up their hard earned hard work for stuff. Because you want to sit at the crib like a king or a queen and you ain't worth sugar, <laughs> salt, or any type of seasoning, right? You are like salt that has lost its flavor. What did God say about salt that lost its flavor? What did Jesus say about salt that lost its flavor? It's good for nothing. You just throw it out, right? It's good for absolutely nothing. I forgot where that's at in the Bible. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an iron man. So poverty going to come to you like people that travel all the time. And people what? Travel all the time. People travel. Right? There's always travel in the land. Right? So God says your poverty always going to be there. Right? All because you're lazy. Right? You don't want to do anything. So he said your bitterness will come to you if you're lazy. He said don't be lazy and get everything within season. Sitting around waiting getting stuff out of season it may not be there and it's damn dang it show sure ain't gonna be as good as it would have been had you got it within season right yeah don't be a griper right sowing discord warning against sowing discord right chapter 6 verse 12 a naughty person a wicked man walketh with a flower mouth he winketh with his eyes he speaketh with his feet he teaches with his fingers flowerness is in his heart he devises mischief continuously Continually, he so of discord. Therefore, shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly, shall he be broken without remedy. So, a, a naughty person, a wicked man, somebody who always got something stank and stupid as they, to say about another person, who sit there and be like, you, sh nah, I don't say, always winking his eye at somebody, talking junk about you behind your back. You know what I mean? That winking his eye at you, winking his eye at your wife. That's the type of person who is continuously in mischief, and that's all they do is so discord. So this is the type of person he is warning his son to definitely stay away from because you won't mess around after kill somebody like that about yours, right? It's the type of person who will flirt with your wife in your face and even test your wife, right? So you're gonna end up having to kill somebody like this. So he said, Nah, you better make sure you get away from a person like this, right? A person who sows discord, don't be around it because it's the type of person who go out to the club, start all kinds of fights, and now you out there fighting and this person sitting in the car waiting on you, right? Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. So he don't like proud folk, he don't like people that lie, and he can't stand people that go around killing innocent people, or bothering innocent people, or putting your hands on innocent people, fighting with innocent people, starting crap with innocent people. A heart that devises wicked Im Im imaginations. <clears throat> And feet that are swift to run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that so of discord among brethren. So he can't stand a person who says. Yeah I seen so and so do that. And you ain't seen so and so do nothing. Right. He can't stand a person that's a false witness against another person. All those people who be in court telling lies. But under oath. Right. God said. Oh. Uh, oh. 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 It's a stank karma for people like you. Trust me. Warning against adultery. I'm not going to go there because that goes under, right, unchastness, being unchast, meaning you just giving it up, tossing it, and God said you don't do that in no realm, whether you are male or female. So I don't have to talk about adultery because he said keep your legs closed until you are married anyway, and you are to only be with one woman, right? That's what he said already. So I'm not going to deal with the adultery, which is chapter 6, verses 20 through 35, right? Um, if you want to read about it, go to Proverbs verse chapter 6, verses 20 through 25, and he'll tell you all about how he feels about adultery. But the six things that the Lord does hate, he tells you, chapter 6, verse 16, and they are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sow discord among brethren. So if you out here causing trouble amongst family members, amongst homies, God can't stand you. He hates you, right? He hates you. If you love wicked stuff, if you love to imagine nasty wicked stuff, God hates you. If you love running to mischief, like you see somebody fighting and you constantly run into every fight. You see like, yo, yo, so and so down the street fighting. God said, I hate you. Because you need something else to do with your time. Why are you always around when a fight going on? Why is it exciting to you? Grow up, right? 
a proud look. Oh, you sitting around all smug. You can't stand smugness, lying, telling lies. You already know people can't stand liars. They're highly untrustworthy. And people who kill, right? If you kill unjustly, right? God hates you. So those are the seven things that God hates, right? So that discord, God said, the discord is where all the issues come in at. So he said, don't be out here sowing no discord because you're going to catch yourself murdering, getting murdered, or put in jail, or having to put someone in jail. So, what you need to do is just keep yourself around godly people. Keep yourself around the people that God has placed for you to be around, which are what? In this case, he's talking about the Israelites, right? He said, do not remove yourself from the Israelites. Keep yourself around the Israelites. Do not go around foreign people. You won't have any problem, right? Stay amongst your own brethren. You won't have no problem. Stay amongst your own Christians. You won't have any problem, right? Stay amongst real Christians and stay away from the world and their nonsense. And you won't have any problems, right? Stay in your own household, up out of people's face, and you won't have any problems, right? Stay off your phone, minding somebody else's business. Stay off your so off social media, minding the next person's account. And you won't have no problems in your life, right? So that is the lesson of Proverbs chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6, right? Um, renewed mind, renewed spirit. Excuse me, re, uh, clean heart, renewed mind, right spirit. Going back to the basics, right? And this is just, you know... That's pretty much what you really need to know, right? Stay about and people business. Stay about the people face. Don't be idle. Don't be lazy. Um, don't miss out on your blessing. And always search wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in everything. Even if it seems like something small, right? Something big can come out of it. A great lesson could come out of something very small. Something that takes 10 seconds, you can learn a great lesson from. Something that takes 3 seconds, you can learn a great lesson from. Right. So, um... Right, obtain the wisdom, stay chast, don't be idle, continuously be working, be moving, be learning, be searching, be doing something constructive, right? Um, and then, you know, just the adultery, right? You know better. Stay chast, right? Not gonna go there. Alright, so have a great evening, right? Well, right, an excellent evening, because we're definitely an evening, alright? Have a good one.